2046 is a hell of a year to start with. Question's kind of vague. I wish you would narrow it down. There's a lot going to occur in 2046. Hell, some ancient culture before the flood during the vapor canopy invented an entire calendrical system based off 1,872,000 turnings of the stars until the next time a similar event would occur. The event in question was an impact event that occurred in 31, 3113 BC. We know this as the Mayan long count, but Mayan scholars and Central American Indian scholars know that the Mayan, the Maya inherited this timekeeping system. It involved 13 epics that spanned 144,000 days or turnings of the stars each. These were called Bactons, and under the original vapor canopy year of 360 days a year, it was exactly 400 years. Four centuries was a Bactin, because 400 times 360 turnings of the stars, or a day, under the stellar system, when all the circumpolar stars revolved around the Eye of the Dragon, Alpha Draconis, the ancient pole star, that was a single day. And they measured time and days under the vapor canopy because years had absolutely no meaning. The reason years didn't have any meaning is because there were no seasons. Under a vapor canopy, you have almost no wind, no soul. The sun does not penetrate. Uh, it, the entire sky is an ambient violet. The light is diffused through such a thick, watery atmosphere that there's nowhere on the surface of the world that you can look up and pinpoint where the, the location of the sun. There's no sun to be seen. A thick vapor canopy separates uh, this, the uh, basically visibility on the ground from being able to see the sun, no matter how far the sun is, if it's a very local small object or if it's truly 93 million miles away, it doesn't matter. Either way, it's all simulated. It's all programming. What we have a problem with is identifying the particulars of, a pro of the program and being able to agree on the specifics. Like flat earthers are very convinced that the sun is very local and the, and the moon is local. I too am very convinced of that and they're much smaller than, than purported to be. However, I'm not a flat earther, I'm a simulationist. I believe that all the conclusions of flat earth, if somebody was to stop trying to prove that the world was flat and start realizing that the entire history of the world makes sense once we, ad once we adopt flat earth theory, they will then reach the necessary conclusions that will take them further than flat earth can go, which is the next step will be, will be a program delusion where we're at. There is no way that a civilization under the vapor canopy in the 31st and 32nd century BC could have computed the next time there was going to be an impact event in North America in 1,872,000 days, which is the length of the Mayan long count, which is divisible by 52, which is divisible by 108, which is divisible by 72, processional number, which is divisible by 144, golden proportion, golden mean, the major number in the sequence of the Fibonacci sequence. It is divisible by 13, which is exactly 144,000 turnings of the stars times 13. It's 1,872,000. This is the long count of the Maya inherited from the Olmeca. The Olmeca inherited it from the ancient East. It, it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting, but it never ended in 2012. It ends in 2046. And in 2011, I, I had a book published by Book Tree Press where I was telling pretty much the whole world who would listen, who would order my books, that, hey, man, you guys are wrong. There may be 212 books out today that are all, all postulating that some doomsday event was going to occur in 2012. And interestingly, many of those authors continued that bullshit after 2012. No one paid attention to my book, just like they don't pay attention to my books now. I can't get my books peer-reviewed. Nobody takes me seriously, and that's fine. I don't need them. What I need is for those few who do listen to me to realize that the arithmetic that I provide is verifiable. Anybody can use a calculator and confirm anything I have said in any of my videos. 
because there's nothing esoteric about them. There's nothing secretive. There's nothing hyper-scientific to where only a scientist can understand it. My videos are pretty clear-cut. Take the measurements of the Great Pyramid, scientifically done by Sir Flinders Petrie, and apply them to the events in world history uh, in, in a calendar. And I provide those events in Chronicon, and I show in Chronicon the exact sources from which I derive those dates. Two independent sources of data. All I did was coalesce them into a single, a single piece of information and provide, provide it for you, and I call it archaics. So... Uh, 2046, 2046 is going to be harrowing, unlike 2040. 2040 is only going to, is basically going to affect Asia uh, really bad. 2046, even Nostradamus is very, very specific about the second cataclysm. So is, so is Ursula Southiel. You know her as Mother Shipton. She said the second cataclysm was going to follow the first very quickly and be worse. Nostradamus is even more specific. He says the entire Western world will die. This is the message, too, of the, of the Mayan long count, which ends in 2046 and never ended in 2012. But those authors that published those books in 2012, oh my God, you should read their, the, the books they put out in 2013 and in 2014. Oh my God. The excuses they provided. Really clever. Oh, the great, the great, change in 2012 was dimensional. It was esoteric. It was mystic. All the things that they had predicted in the geophysical world because nothing happened. They now published books in 2013 and 2014 saying that the huge shift in 2012 indeed happened. You just didn't see it because it was in the spiritual world. I'm sorry. My name's Jason. I'm not buying that bullshit. Their arithmetic was wrong. In 1952, they miscalculated it, and I published a book about it, and nobody paid attention. Maybe some of y'all are paying attention now. But the Mayan long count ends in November of 2046. The Maya themselves said that time will collapse. That doesn't mean the holosphere is going to collapse with the simulacrum. It means time. Time is measured by the movement of the stellosphere. There is no other way to measure time. It doesn't matter if it's stellar, lunar, or solar. It doesn't matter what timekeeping system, if it's natural, processional, or uh, mechanistic, like a clock, digital. It doesn't matter. All time is measured not by the movement of our world. That's the illusion this is, that the simulacrum tries to, to uh, promulgate to get you to believe that you're in a real universe when you're not. All, all time is measured by the movement of the sky, the stellosphere. That's how we measure. When, when that sun crosses, all, crosses, crosses, crosses the uh, sky, we call it daytime. When it's, all, when it's dark, we call it nighttime. We measure, we measure time like this. Have we moved at all? There's no evidence of it. There's no parallax. Well, that's, that's not the subject of, that, of this question. 2046 is the one million well, November 2046 is the 1,872,000th day. It is the final, is the final end is the 13th back then. It is the return of the seven, I think it's called Yakti. But seven gods are returning, according to the ancient Maya. Sounds like the book of Revelation all over again, doesn't it? Wormwood comes, uh, Wormwood is 2046. It is, it is in the judgments. Because remember, 2040 in the month of May is the sixth seal. I show this over and over and over how the Phoenix event in May 2040 is the sixth seal. I can't give you all the evidence for that in this video. That's what a whole 31 series video series was about. Uh, my Phoenix, my Phoenix playlist. You can't, you can't refute it. There's just, there's just no refuting it. It's, it, it's 100%. The sixth seal, sky darkening, moon turning red, the earthquakes, men, the, the men, not just not just not just people, but the rulers and the kings and the priests of the earth hiding in terror in mountains and caves and underground. That's what the book of Revelation says. Why? Because the Phoenix takes out the elite every time it can. So